Good morning. Come on in. It's time to worship. I've had a little different morning, but invite you to come on in as we begin to praise together and worship. You can come on down. There's a lot of good seats down front yet. Come on down. We did this song last night and had a lot of fun at Revive, and so we're going to do it again this morning with Nelson. Great. 
I'm sorry I left this on and my light is red. Do I still have enough battery? <laughs> I'll try it. Do we believe what we just sang? That one verse, that one phrase that just caught my attention as we went through there was, we are the church. We are the hope of earth. That's just an amazing statement. And I believe that it is so true because I have heard and I believe that there is nothing like the local church when the local church is working well in terms of being a light and a hope for this earth. And last night we heard that the, the basic part of that is let's go. Let's go and make and grow disciples. And then... We are the hope of the earth. We can sit here all day and sing it. It's after we leave here that we get the chance to put it into practice. As we come into our prayer time this morning, obviously, again, this week, our community has been touched with the loss of Jay Hostetler, uh, passing away Wednesday morning. His viewing is this afternoon and evening, and then the funeral tomorrow morning. But Wednesday was, again, one of those special times that I think only a pastor gets to do. I went into the intensive care unit there where Jay was and was able to be with Helen and James. And then I was able to go up to third floor and hold Sarah. And it's just such a reminder of the ends of life. A new life beginning. And for Jay, life on this earth ending, but also a new life beginning in heaven. Anyone here this morning who is carrying something that you would like to pray for, I invite you to stand at this time, and those who are sitting close to you will remember you this week. You can stand at this time. Thank you. Please join with me in prayer. God, we come into your presence this morning with thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for the many blessings, the mercies that you give us each new day. So it is with a spirit of thanksgiving that we come before you. And the thing that we thank you for more than anything else is your great love which sent your Son to die for our sins. And we are grateful that Jesus Christ rose victorious over sin and death. It's what gives us this great hope this morning. In the midst of our sorrow of the passing of Jay Hostetler, and God, I just pray a special blessing on Helen and James and the rest of their family, the grandchildren, as they go through the viewing today and the funeral tomorrow. And God, I just pray your hand and your spirit of comfort on them. We also pray for Ernie and Linda Hostetler in the death of Linda's brother, Harvey Chupp. And many people in this congregation knew Harvey, and it's another loss to this larger community. But God, we thank you. We thank you for faithful people who have worked at building your kingdom here. And we recognize that now, today, we are your church in this time and this place. Give us the passion. Fill us with your power. I just pray that you will increase Clinton Frame in fulfilling the purpose which you have for us, which is to share the good news of Jesus. We thank you for the new life of Sarah Grace. We pray for Stefan and Beth and Emma as they adjust to a new baby in their household. God, I thank you for that family. May you just bless their home. This morning, we pray for our world. God, we mourn the violence. And this morning, we especially pray for the Christians in Egypt and Libya, 
the persecution they face, the, the horrible loss that they've experienced. And God, we know that while we're here in this safe environment worshiping you, that there are Christians in other parts of the world who are dying because they love you and they're talking about you. God, I just pray that you will be with them in a special way and that you will burden our hearts uh, in a way that helps us to reach out in any way that we can. We pray that we will not only be about building your kingdom here, but that we are about building your kingdom anywhere on this earth. We thank you for our young adults who are spread out in different places of the world. We thank you for the opportunity we have today to serve you in many places. And God, just now, I thank you for your spirit here this morning. May you bless Matt as he brings us your message. Give us open hearts and open ears to hear. And God, give us a willing spirit. If we need to be broken, I pray that you will break us. If we need to be challenged, I pray that we will be challenged. But may we leave here today knowing that we have encountered you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a cut two announcements this morning. And first of all, I just want to thank you again, those of you who have been working and volunteering with Revive. And I can't say how many times people from the community have thanked me as, because I'm the pastor here and they know my face. But they're really thanking Clinton Frame for opening up our doors uh, and making this possible. Uh, and so I hope that those of you who are so involved in volunteering can hear that word of appreciation uh, from the community to us. We have one more weekend. Uh, there are sign-up sheets in the foyer again. Uh, but this will be the last weekend that we will be uh, hosting Revive. Um, so let's do it well. Also, just I want to remind us, we said two weeks ago, that we've begun uh, the ministry of prayer teams here. And again this morning at the end of the service, uh, a few people in the prayer team will come forward. And if you have any prayer needs, uh, I just invite you to come forward uh, and they will pray for you and pray over you. Um, so we will have that again uh, at the end of this service. And I so much appreciate those persons who are willing uh, to take on this really spiritual commitment of praying for others. I invite the ushers to come forward. Father, again, we thank you for the many blessings. We thank you for the financial resources that you have provided for us as a congregation in our lives. And so, God, this morning we bring to you our tithes, we bring to you our offerings, just in an attitude of thankfulness and thanksgiving that we can do this, that we can be a part of giving back what we've received from you, and we can be a part of sharing Jesus through this money. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
don't have the words for this, but I invite you to join me in the chorus of It Is Well. If you're carrying a prayer need this morning, or just a joy, just offer and say, God, it is well with my soul. share the details, but just go pray for them. Bless them. Bless them. How can I pray for you?
housekeeping on Christ the solid rock I stand there's a great peace that comes when we stand on hard rocks when we have that as our foundation unlike maybe the sand that can move around us Someone asked me the other day, how are you doing? I think a lot of times when we ask people how they're doing, we expect, oh, fine, I'm doing okay. Life's good. I mean, we don't tell people how we're really doing. But I decided to just kind of put it out there, and I basically said, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if I know who I am. I'm having a bit of an identity crisis, I suppose. You see, I'm not the same person that I was about 42-odd days ago. And I'm not the same person that I'll be 10 days from now. God is really moving in my heart and stretching me in some ways. And a a lot of days it feels like I'm standing on sand. It's hard to move around. It's hard to really get my, my footing. I'm having a bit of an identity crisis. Who am I? Who is God to me? I remember feeling a lot of the same things right after 9-11 and and really questioning a lot of things in my faith. Who am I? Who is God to me? How is God working in my life? When, When the earth quakes... What are our foundations? The winds of our lives rock in in a lot of different situations. Uh, Perhaps for you it's a job situation. And when there's chaos at your job, at your workplace, it affects everything else, right? It affects your relationships with your wife, your, your husband, your children, your neighbors. Some of you may be going through a crisis at your work or a crisis in a relationship right now. We as a church body are going through some unsteady phases. 
I mean, we've changed a lot in here. We're going through changes in, in worship a little bit and how we use lights and the building, the physical building has changed. We all like, like permanence. I don't, I'm not sure if anybody likes change. We all like to know what to expect. We're going changes, through changes right now with Revive Indiana and what does that mean for us as a church and, and how we interact with the community and, and what does that mean? Right now we're going through changes with uh, how we affiliate and, and do we affiliate with, with this body or this body or both or, or what do we do? And, and so we're going through a lot of changes right now. And I think it's really easy to ask ourselves, who are we as a church? Who are we as a community? Where is our foundation? Where is our solid rock that we can say, this is who we are? Paul is dealing with, in his letter to the Corinthians, Paul is dealing with this very question. 1 Corinthians 3. If you have your Bibles, turn with you to 1 Corinthians 3. He's dealing with a people who are having a bit of an identity crisis themselves, perhaps. They, they were pagans, they worshiped these idols, and now they're coming to Christ. And, and there's some things that are happening among them that Paul is not happy with. He's saying, listen, the foundations that you're settling on, the foundations that you're building everything on, are all wrong. And so he says this, 1 Corinthians 3, and we'll start in verse 1. He says, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? And let me stop right there. I love what Paul can get away with. Like he's invested himself so much in these people and what he's able to get away with. He's like, listen, you guys are a bunch of babies. I mean, I gave you milk when you first came to Christ because that's what you needed. And I wish I could feed you some steak from, you know, right now, but instead I've still got a a bottle feed you. Do you want your bottle? I, I mean, that's what I have to give to you, a bottle. I mean, he's just laying it out there. Imagine if somebody like, listen, I'm going to bottle feed you because obviously you can't handle meat. That's what Paul's saying. He's laying it out there for him. He's telling him how it is. He's not holding back. He says, listen, I've got to give you a bottle. So here, let me continue t- to, to give you some milk. Let me teach you about the, the basic things about Christianity because obviously you don't get it yet. You're still babies because there's jealousy and quarreling among you. And and this is the foundation for what he says. Now, it's easy uh, as we read this passage to see these names and and kind of lose sight of of what is happening here. So I'm going to include some names that are maybe a little little bit more relevant for us. Okay, so start off in verse 4. For one says, I follow John Calvin. And another says, I follow John Wesley. And another says, I follow Martin Luther. And another says, I follow the Pope. And another says, I follow Menno Simons. And another says, I follow Terry Diener. And if you're following me, the Lord be with you. (laughs) Another says, I follow Paul. And another, I follow Apollos. Are you not mere men? For what, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I, Paul speaking here, I, Paul, planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters it anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, 
and each will be award, rewarded according to his own label, labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. Now, we belong to a Mennonite church. We have been worshiping with Revive Indiana with Lutherans and Baptists and Pentecostals and Charismatics, other Mennonites, Amish, Assemblies of God, nothing, I mean, non-denominational churches. You see, I, I truly do not believe that denominations are bad things. They're not. We, we each have our own theology. We each have our own way of understanding who God is. We have different worship styles, different worship practices. We could go down the line, all of the, the things that we disagree with each other on. But at a certain point, we have to get together and say, listen, we may understand some of these, these things differently, but here's the, the, the basis we share the same Jesus. What is Apollos? This is a servant of the Lord who is meant, who is preaching Jesus. His role, Apollos' role, Paul's role, Terry's role, Kyle's role, is not to build a church around their personality. Their sole purpose is to point people to Jesus. I'm used to the head nodding. It's weird. We're having, yeah, Yahtzee. These are men. Terry is a man. I am a man. Anita is a woman. Sheila is a woman. Linda is a, a woman. John's a man. Danny's a man. Marlon is a man. Sorry, you just happen to be who I saw. Even Marlon, if he teaches. It's not to build a cult of personality around himself. It is to point people to Jesus. I love what this next verse says. Is what are our foundations then when we begin to meet together and, and there's all of these theologies that are different? What is our foundation? How do, we, how do we stand firm? What happens? And this is what Paul says. And I love that this verse is sort of the battle cry. Not, okay, that's a bad choice of words. Um, this, this is a foundational stone for Anabaptists. Battle cry was the wrong word there. <laughs> Lord, help me right now. <laughs> Continuing on in verse 10. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. And here it is. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, here's the thing about foundation. Some of you are construction. I thought about having maybe Bob Miller come give a demonstration here. Foundations are important, aren't they? I mean, if you go to, a, to buy a house and, and the foundation is crumbling, no matter how nicely everything above that looks you should rightfully say, I think I'm going to pass on this one. Because what happens when the foundation gives way? Everything else will crumble as well. It doesn't matter how nicely what you have built on top of a lousy foundation is, eventually, when the ground begins to shake, that building is going to collapse. It's coming down. And what Paul is saying here is, listen, it is not Apollos, it is not Paul, it is not any earthly man who is teaching and pointing people to Jesus that is the foundation of our faith. No, it is Christ. And that is why the early church were known as Christians, as many Christs. Because it was Christ who formed the foundation, the center of their entire identity. When the Anabaptists come around, 
During the Protestant Reformation, what has been happening is this. Martin Luther tags these theses on the door and uh, talking about abuse, abuses in the Catholic Church at the time. And, and one of the things that he begins to say is this. Sola Scriptura. Scripture alone is important. And, and we should study Scripture and find the right theology about everything and, and, and just... And he was heavy on Paul. He loved Paul. I love Paul. But the Anabaptist came along and said, yes, Scripture is great when we, we need to rely upon Scripture. But here's the thing. Scripture does not exist for its own sake. Scripture points us to who? Jesus. See, it's not about Scripture. It's about Jesus. Jesus is our foundation. And so what they would say is solo Christus in Christ alone. Christ alone is our foundation of everything that we do. Now, I think theology matters. Don't hear me say it doesn't matter. Because theology affects how we live our lives as well. But is the center of our faith Jesus? And if it is, it will change how we live. It will change how we work. It will change how we gather as a community. It will change how we go out as a community. When we put Christ at the center of everything. The Anabaptist said this, Christ alone is the foundation stone. And if something came along where they said, all right, that, that, that's not of Christ anymore. They said, listen, th this whole baptism thing, we, we disagree with you. And, and they eventually kicked out the Anabaptists. And the Anabaptists were like, fine, we'll go over here and do this. For them, for the Anabaptists, for, for us as Anabaptists, the most important thing is what did Jesus say? Who is Jesus? And let's follow that no matter the cost. Let us follow Jesus no matter the cost. We've been talking with Revive Indiana about some of the Amish who may be shunned from their church communities. The early Anabaptists were chased down and martyred for their faith. We have an entire book, The Martyr's Mirror, just telling stories of our brothers and sisters, those early Anabaptists who were killed for their faith, killed for their beliefs. Killed because they were willing to say, Christ is our foundation and we will obey no matter what happens. See, Christ gave them hope. It gave them new life. It changed their perspective on everything. Everything. There are more Anabaptist martyrs in the 16th and 17th centuries than the first three centuries of Christianity combined. As a church community, we need to be making Christ our core our foundation. And we can build some things up after that. We can build some theology on after that. But if it's not based upon who we see Jesus Christ as, it will fail and our church community will fail. Christ is our everything. Is Christ our cornerstone? As you live your life, is Jesus your foundation? Because if Jesus is your foundation, it will radically change the way that you live your life. I love what Scripture says. Listen, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ then it, it, it should be impossible for both blessings to God to come out of your mouth and then also curses to your fellow man. You see, Jesus changes how you speak.
And if I could add a little bit, if you claim Jesus as your core, then it will affect how you treat other people. You will not be able to claim Jesus as your Lord and lie and steal and murder. When we make Jesus our core, it changes everything about us. It changes how we relate to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why Paul, over and over again, has all of these one another passages. Because he's teaching people, training people. Listen, as new believers, this is how you relate to one another. This is how Christ changes you. Has Christ changed the way that you live your life? If not, you're acting. If not, you're acting. In fact, the word for acting is, is also the word we have for the word hypocrite. If Christ is not changing how you live, if you're claiming Christ is your Lord and living in a completely different way, it's hypocrisy. It's wearing a mask. Is Christ the cornerstone, the foundation upon which you have built everything else in your life? If not, guess what? Your house will crash. Your community will crash. As we go forward as a church community, as we begin to discern together what our identity is, Let us always keep Christ at our core. The core of everything that we do, of everything that we say. As the worship team comes forward, we're going to have people as well gathered at the front if you're willing to come um, in need of prayer. And I could list a whole bunch of things that maybe you need prayer for this morning. But my question is this. Is if Christ is your cornerstone, then are there areas of your life that aren't in conjunction with that? Are you living a double life? And if so, it's time to get right. It's time to change how you're living your life. Because Christ should affect everything. Will you stand? Let's pray.
go forth. May you make him your everything. May you be willing to give up reputation. May you be willing to give up job. May you give up status, money, whatever it takes to say, I'm keeping Christ at my center. May you go in peace. And may you serve our risen King.